Now, let's go ahead and just solve some problems. And I think that'll be the best way to handle this. So example one. Example one. Let P of T theta equal T cosine theta, T sine theta, and theta for T greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to one, and theta greater than or equal to zero, and less than or equal to pi over two. And we will let F of x, y, z. So you notice, okay, equal to z, x, and y. Okay, our task is to find the circulation of f around the curve. Let's draw this out and see what it looks like. Okay. This parameterization, t goes from 0 to 1, theta goes from 0 to pi over 2. This is the parameterization of a spiral surface. In other words, imagine a parking ramp. It is a spiral surface. If I take a, if I'm looking from the top, and if I take some track like this, and if I split this, and if I lift it up, what I end up is having a track that goes up like that, a spiral. So what it actually looks like is it's this surface right here, actually spiraling up. Theta goes from 0 to pi over 2. This is y, this is x. So this is just that part of it, only half of it. And t goes from 0 to 1. So this is a length, just 1, 1. That's all it is. Now, here's what's interesting. The boundary actually has four parts. There is this curve, c1. There is this curve, C2. There is this curve, which is C3. And there is this curve, which is C4. Therefore, if I actually wanted to solve this, if I wanted to find the circulation of F around this curve, I have to parameterize four curves, C1, C2, C3, and C4. I can do that. It's not a problem. I mean, I can parameterize these things if I need to. Um, but I don't need to because I have Stokes' theorem at my disposal, so I'm just going to go ahead and solve the surface integral. And the surface is actually easily parameterized. In fact, they gave us the parameterization, so you definitely want to use Stokes' theorem in this case. So circulation, circulation is this. So C is equal to C1... union C2, union C3, union C4. So it's the integral around C of F of C of T dot C prime dt. And that's the circulation integral. C is composed of these four curves. If I go all the way around, again, I'm traversing it this way, keeping the region to my left. Well, I don't want to solve this uh, via circulation. So if we solve the integral, If we solve the line integral directly, we'll have to parameterize four curves. Parameterize four curves and solve four integrals, which we definitely don't want to do. <laughs> Okay, but we have Stokes' theorem, but we have, 
we have Stokes' theorem, which says that f of c dot c prime dt is equal to, so this is the curve, this is the surface, the curl of f of p dot n dt du. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just run it through. Let's just figure out what each of these is, put it in. Okay. So let's go ahead and find n first. Let me do this in blue. So n, so n, let's go ahead and find dp, dt. When I take the partial of the parameterization with respect to t, I get cosine theta, sine theta, and I get zero. When I take the partial of the parameterization with respect to theta, I get minus t sine theta, I get t cosine theta, and I get 1. Well, n is equal to dp dt cross dp du. Oh, sorry, I already have, I don't need t and u, it's dp dt dp d theta. There we go. So it's going to be dp dt cross dp d theta. And when I go ahead and run that particular one, I end up with the following. I end up with sine theta minus cosine theta and t. So that's n. So now when I take the curl, so I've taken care of n. Now I need curl of f. Well, the curl of f, I'm going to actually do this one explicitly. I, j, k, d, d, x, d, d, y, d, d, z of z, x, and y. When I expand along the top row, I get 1, 1, and 1. So that's the curl of f. Okay. Well, I need the curl of f of p. I need that. Well, the curl of f is just is 1, 1, 1. So it's a constant vector. So there is no composition here. So I can just leave it as 1, 1, and 1. Well, the curl of f of p dotted with the vector n is equal to sine theta minus cosine theta plus t. So the integral that we're looking for, our circulation is t goes from 0 to 1, theta goes from 0 to pi over 2, our curl of f of p dot n is sine theta minus cosine theta plus t, and we did theta first, so it's d theta dt, and our final answer is pi over 4. There you go. So the circulation of this vector field happens to equal pi over 4. It is positive. What this means is that this vector field is actually rotating on that surface. That's what we've done. That's what Stokes' theorem does. Okay, thank you for joining us here at educator.com for our first part of the discussion of Stokes' theorem. We'll see you next time for the second part of the discussion of Stokes' theorem. Bye-bye.